and I waited to see her leave for the day. Sure enough, she left the building fairly early, and instead of getting into her car, she got into the car of one of her male co-workers and drove off with him. I followed them closely and watched them pull into a motel where the two of them went into a room together. I didn't need to see any more, as I could easily guess why they were there, and so I went home and cried myself to sleep. Hi there, my name's Sean, and I have had some rather rough years recently, but I'm happy to say that things are finally beginning to look up. However, I needed to go through a lot of unfortunate problems to get where I am right now. Let me start at the beginning. My wife Becky and I met through an online dating site. It really made the whole process of getting to know each other easy and straightforward. We began talking to each other every day through texting and phone calls, to the point where when we finally did go out on our first date, that it felt like we had been dating for months since we knew so much about each other already. Well, eventually we made the choice to move in with one another. It just felt natural at the time, and within months we were engaged, and not long after that we were married. A lot of people said that things were moving fast with us, but we both felt confident that we were happy and that we were moving as quickly as we felt comfortable with. We even talked about our future together and how we wanted children eventually, but at the moment that we wanted to focus on our careers. My wife worked for an advertising company and wanted more than anything to move up in the ranks until she joined the board of directors. As for me, I worked as an information technology consultant, and while I worked fewer hours than my wife, I made nearly twice what she did. This of course didn't matter to us, but it was just a part of life, really. During the pandemic, we both started working from home, and as it wrapped up, Becky couldn't wait to get back to the office while I had grown rather fond of working from home, and so I continued to do so. I wish I had done it sooner as I loved it. My hours and breaks were incredibly flexible, and so long as the work got done, no one questioned what I did and when. However, it was around this time that Becky's mother fell in her home and broke her hip. She was told that she could go on to make a full recovery, but it was obvious that she could no longer live on her own anymore, and Becky approached me to ask if it would be okay if she were to move in with us. Her father had passed away many years before, and he had always watched out for her. At first I was hesitant, as this seemed like it would interfere with our lives. I loved my mother-in-law, don't get me wrong, but our house was rather small, and should we try to have a child, her mother would have to hear us going at it, and that made me feel incredibly uncomfortable. However, in the end, we agreed to eventually hire a nurse and to begin looking for a larger house. And so for a while, I would look after my mother-in-law. It was fairly easy, actually. And since I could make my own schedule, I was able to take care of preparing her meals and just helping her heal in general until we got the dreaded news. As it turned out, she had slipped a few vertebrae and she would never be able to walk without assistance ever again. On top of that, her body was deteriorating in general and she could barely get out of bed at all. And so, I was forced to help her more and more. My job was very understanding, but there were times when I would worry that I was spending too much time with my mother-in-law and not enough on work. But things worked out. After a few months though, I sat my wife down and asked her what the plan was, because it didn't seem like anything was changing. She had promised me that she would be looking for a nurse, but so far hadn't found one. Hey Becky, we need to talk. Talk? What on earth about? Well, it's just that we talked about getting a nurse to help care for your mother, and it's been months now, and we haven't. Yeah, I know, but I've been busy, and I know that mom likes you and that you two get along well. Trust me, we'll look into it soon enough. I just really need to focus at work right now. It was a terrible excuse, but I believed her, and it was true that my mother-in-law and I got along great. We would spend every meal together talking and getting to know one another better. Time passed, and before I knew it, it had been over a year since I had started looking after my mother-in-law, and I started to get impatient. Not only had we not revisited the idea of getting a nurse, but we had stopped trying for a child and hadn't even begun to look at homes. I was getting more and more upset with Becky, and on top of everything, she was working longer hours at work. Hey Becky, I know that you're probably still really busy with work, but can we talk about plans of getting a nurse, or even about having a baby? Ew, you still want to have a baby? Well, I'm sorry, but I changed my mind. There's no way I'm gonna have a baby and ruin my body. So you might as well just forget all about that. And I'm not wasting my money on a nurse when you can do the same job for free. I'm not made of money, you know. I never said that you were, but I thought we were on the same page. I couldn't believe what she was saying. After we had gotten married, 
We had both wanted to have children, and suddenly she changed her mind? I knew that it was something that she absolutely could do, but it still stung to hear that she no longer wanted children, and I still did. I was heartbroken, and I confided in my mother-in-law, as I didn't really have anyone else to talk to. I'm sorry to dump this on you, but I don't know what to do. She is acting very strange, and I don't want to put ideas in your head, but are you sure that she is working late? What do you mean? Well, it's just that she had changed so much recently. Are you also sure that she is being faithful to you? It wasn't something I had ever considered before, but suddenly it made a lot of sense. The next day, after work, I drove down to Becky's office, and I waited to see her leave for the day. Sure enough, she left the building fairly early, and instead of getting into her car, she got into the car of one of her male co-workers and drove off with him. I followed them closely and watched them pull into a motel where the two of them went into a room together. I didn't need to see any more, as I could easily guess why they were there, and so I went home and cried myself to sleep. The next day, I paid a visit to an attorney and began making plans to divorce Becky, but would need time to gather up all the necessary paperwork. A few weeks later, Becky approached me and she seemed rather distraught. Hey Becky, what's up? Hey Sean, um, I have some good news. I'm pregnant. I thought you said that you never wanted to have a baby. Well, it just sort of happened. I mean, I guess we weren't careful enough. How is that even possible? I don't know what to tell you, but it happened. I am pregnant. No, I meant. How is it possible that it's mine? We haven't had sex in close to eight months and you've been sleeping with your co-worker this whole time. What did you say? Oh, you can drop the act. I saw you go to that motel with him. I know what you've been up to, and I have news for you. I handed her the divorce papers. These are divorce papers, and I think you would like to know that I've hired a private investigator, and he has been following you for weeks and has been gathering up evidence. Did you know that guy you are sleeping with has a wife and kids? You jerk! How dare you do that to me? And yes, I knew, but she's fat and ugly and he has a much better paying job than you do. Plus, I'll just take you to court and get alimony from you, and the house since the court will be lenient on me for being a woman. Maybe they would have, but since I have a lot of proof that you cheated on me, the court will decide in my favor. You aren't going to get anything. True enough, when it came to our court case. The judge ruled in my favor, and not only did he give me the house, but denied my wife any alimony. However, I made too much more than her to get alimony from her, but I still considered it a win. After what her daughter had done, my mother-in-law asked if she could continue to stay with me, and I couldn't say no. After all the time that we had spent with one another, I had grown very attached to her and began to see her as my own mother. Thankfully, once the child was born, a paternity test was performed, and the co-worker was proven to be the father. I made sure to let all their co-workers know this fact, and it blew up on them in spectacular fashion. It took less than a day for literally everyone in the office to know their secret, and once management knew, they instantly fired both of them as they didn't want their company associated with their behavior. Not only that, but Becky's co-worker's wife found out what he had done and divorced him. Unlike my ex-wife, she did get alimony, but also their house and their kids as well, leaving the two cheaters jobless and homeless. The last I heard, the two had gone through a few jobs and apartments too. Apparently, they keep getting kicked out of their apartments as they constantly fight and are forced to leave because of noise complaints. As for me, well, shortly after the divorce paperwork was completed, my mother-in-law took a turn for the worse. She began to get sicker and sicker until one day she passed away in her sleep. I was devastated, even though I knew that one day it would happen. Soon afterwards though, a lawyer contacted me and told me that my mother-in-law had left me a massive amount of money as an inheritance and had left nothing for her daughter. I had always known that she favored me, but I had never really suspected that she would leave nothing to her daughter. Graciously, I accepted the money and used it to buy a larger house as well as invest in my own retirement. Not long after that, I met Jillian, and things have been going great for me. This time, we are taking things slow, and I'm happy to say that I can already tell that this is going to be a much more rewarding relationship. Jillian has a son from her first marriage, and I've grown to love the little guy just as much as if he were my own flesh and blood. We've even recently discussed having more children so that he would have siblings to play with. And that's my story. It took some time, but I'm happy with how things turned out. Sure, Becky wasn't the best fit for me, but if I hadn't met her, 
then I wouldn't have had the chance to meet and get to know her mother. And without that happening, then I never would have met Jillian. It's strange how sometimes we need to go through some pretty awful stuff before we can finally find where we belong.